Don't forget to subscribe TechQuest Vlogger and also tap the bell icon to never miss a video from us. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how we can install VDA on Windows Server 2012 R2 as well as Windows 8 Client OS. We will also talk about some of the core components which is available with this newer version of VDA. Once again, friends, my name is Nitin Lal and I welcome you all to TechQuestVlogger.com. If you are new to my YouTube channel, then consider subscribing. Alright, let's begin. Welcome back friends. Before performing the installation of actual virtual delivery agents, let's quickly understand the system requirements. I will leave this link under the description box so you can simply refer that as well. Now if you talk about master image, that can either be a desktop machine. If we are talking about desktop, that could either be Windows 7, Windows 8 or Windows 10 operating system. Or it could be server as well so if we are talking about server here then uh, it's Windows 2k 8 and Windows 2k 12 you can use any of these operating systems the machine uh, on which we are going to install VDA that machine should be a member of a domain whatever operating system you're going to use uh, that operating system should be licensed and activated you should have one DSCP as well in your environment. If you would like to know how to install DSCP, you can simply refer the link reflecting on your screen right now. I recommend that you should install VMware tools or Zen Server tool first before installing the VDA. I've seen incident in the past where some of the admins forget to install VMware tools or Zen Server tools on the very first go. They simply install the VDA first and then afterwards they have installed VMware tools. As soon as they create the machine catalogs as well as deliver it out to the users, users see some odd behaviors while launching the applications. What I have seen in the past uh, while launching the application, I have experienced the black screen issues and some other problems as well. So that's why I strongly recommend that you should install VMware tools or Zen server tools first. Same implies for Hyper-V as well. So whatever a hypervisor you are using in your environment, you should ensure that you should install their tools first and then afterwards install the VDA on the top of it. And the last one is, yeah, absolutely VDA, you need that. Let's quickly jump over to the installation part now. As you can see that I have these two machines already set up at this moment. Let me expand it a bit so you all can see. So these are the two machines, one is Windows Server 2012, other one is Windows 8 operating system. So these two machines are already a part of a domain. Also there are some other requirements which I just talked about. In my case I'm using this in my lab environment so that's why my OS is not licensed and activated. I'm just using the evaluation version here. But in your production environment you should ensure that your OS should be licensed as well as activated. So. I already have DSCP, this machine is picking up the IP address from the DSCP itself and I have ins already installed the Zen Server tools as well on this machine. Now I already have the full installer with me but if you prefer to use a standalone package you can do that as well. You can simply download that from uh, Citrix website. So let's open it up, run the auto select. Choose the product version. In my case, I'm using Zen Desktop. I already have Zen Desktop installed in my environment. If you would like to know how you can install the Zen Desktop, uh, you can just simply click on the link reflecting on your screen right now. Click on Start. Now, I'm using uh, Windows Server 2012 right now. That's why it's giving me two different options. One is Delivery Controller, other one is uh, VDA for Windows Server OS. I already have Delivery Controller in my environment. I need to install Virtual Delivery Agent. So let's click on this one. Now, if you're using one of these options, uh, either machine catalog services or a provisioning services, then you need to ensure that you select the very first option, which is create a master image, which I'm going to do as of now. In case if you want to install receiver uh, by using some additional switches, you can uncheck that as well. But in my case, I'm absolutely fine. Let it install with the VDA itself. Click next. 
I don't have FB set up as of now, but I will set it up later on. I will create a separate video as well for FB. So I want to use this environment with FB as well. So I will leave this box check here. Hit next. Now, as you can see that here you have few different options available. One is uh, you can supply this delivery controller information later on. You can do it right away. Yes. That means you can uh, do it manually. Or you can choose location from Active Directory as well to uh, perform this task. And the very last option is let machine creation services do it automatically. So here we are installing it uh, manually. So I'll prefer to include that information right away. So that's the name of my uh, controller. Let's test the connection. As you can see that it passed the connection already. Now I will simply go ahead and click add. Click next. Now on this screen, as you can see, I have few different features available. Let's quickly understand how exactly these feature works. Now, if we talk about the very first uh, feature, which is uh, optimized performance. Now, as you can see that this option is by default enable. So this option is only valid when you're installing a video on a virtual machine. Now, if you're installing a video on a physical machine, there is no use of this uh, particular option. Now, if we talk about the optimization, this optimization includes disabling offline files, disabling background defragmentation and reducing the event log size as well. Now, if you want to, you know, install these particular options via command line, you can do that also. I have included all this information on my article, which uh, I have shown you before this uh, installation part. So you can refer that as well in case if you would like to install it uh, via command line rather than installing it uh, manually here. Now, if we talk about the very second option, which is uh, use Windows Remote Assistance. This option is really helpful if you are using director in your environment. It's a normal Windows Remote Assistant feature, which is pretty helpful in case if you would like to shadow the user session. Now, if we talk about the older environments, which is, uh, let's say, Zenf 6.5 or Zen Desktop older environments, uh, on those days, you have a different shadowing option available. So there was no remote assistant as such during that point of time. But with 7.x, Citrix has removed that option and introduced this uh, remote assistant feature. So we are director, if you would like to shadow the user session, then this option is really helpful. So I prefer to have this option check here. Now, this option is pretty helpful in case if you have wipe, which is widely used. Uh, in your network. Also, this feature reduces latency and improve audio resilience over slow networks. So I also prefer to select this option here. Although I'm just using it in my lab environment, but it's a good practice if you are enabling it in your production environment as well. Now here's another option called Framehawk, which is one of the newest feature which Citrix has introduced. I think this feature was available from uh, VDA 7.6.3 before that it was not at all available so uh, now if you talk about uh, framehawk then citrix also recommend that you enable framehawk only for the users who are likely to experience high packet loss otherwise uh, it is not required to enable the framehawk option so i i'm just using it on my lab environment as of now so i will just leave this box unchecked for now app disk we are not going to cover in this video so i will leave it unchecked as well so hit next now as you can see that these are some default ports uh, uh, for controller communication remote assistance as well as real-time audio now below that you can see two different options one is automatically other one is manually i prefer to create the rule automatically on the os level so i'll leave that box check here but in case if you would like to set it up manually you can do that as well let's leave it on defaults then click next so it's going to install all these prerequisites here and then the components which we have selected. So I'm okay with it. Let's quickly hit the install button. So this installation is going to take a bit of time. So I'm going to pause this video for now. As soon as this installation is done, I will be back. And we are back here. As you can see that it installed all the prerequisites and it's asking us to restart the machine. Let's do that. It's fine. All right, so my machine has been booted up. 
Let's log into the machine here. Now as you can see that it resumed the installation again after the restart. So this installation again going to take a bit of time so I'm going to pause this video again. So as soon as this installation is done I will be back. And we are back. As you can see that the installation has been finished and it jumped over to the very next screen. So in this screen it's up to you whether you would like to participate on this call home program or not. Uh, if you participate on this program then it gather all the information from your machine and send it over to Citrix. I'm using it in my lab environment I prefer not to do that so I just simply select the very second option and hit next as you can see it installed all these components uh, some prerequisites and then these core components so that's fine I'll just click on finish so as soon as I hit finish it's going to restart my machine again All right, so my machine has been booted up. So let me just log into this machine. So my machine has been booted up successfully. Let's just have a look. If I go to programs and features here, I can see that VDA is already installed on this machine along with the uh, Citrix receiver. Now that's my Windows Server 2012. Uh, now you need to follow the exact same step for client OS as well. So for my Windows 8 machine as well, I need to follow the exact same steps. Say th so there is no changes as such, except one thing. Let me just show you quickly. So again, as I have Zen Desktops, I will select the installer for Zen Desktop only. Now, if you remember, when we installed VDA on Windows Server 2012, it was giving us two different options. One was delivery controller because you can install delivery controller only on server OS. And the other one was uh, the VDA for Windows Server OS. Now here, this machine is a client machine. So it's giving me the option for Windows Desktop OS only. So you have different uh, packages for VDAs uh, for server OS there is a different package for client OS there is a different package so I will select this option and rest everything is same uh, likewise we have done on Windows Server 2012 there is no changes as such you need to follow the exact same process here also so you need to select create a master image and the rest everything is same which I have done on Windows Server 2012. So I will create a separate video whereas I will cover how you can create a machine catalogs by using the MCS as well as PVS. Also I will cover how you can deliver those uh, uh, desktop or applications via delivery groups. So that's all I have for now. Thanks for joining me for this course. I will see you in the very next tutorial of mine. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then consider subscribing. Until then, I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.